Hi, I'm Dr. Philip McMillan. Thank you again for joining me as I raise awareness about probably one of the most important bits of data that will be coming out or has come out of the United Kingdom with regards to vaccinated versus unvaccinated status. Now, I'm not going to be going through the data at this point. And what I want you to do is to click on the link below to register because it will take some time to analyze what I think is happening. Now, I'll be coming at it from a unique perspective in the sense that I am focused on autoimmunity and I have been focused on that since March 2020. And I've been able to therefore predict largely what was going to happen in the pandemic. And I think that I'll be able to predict based on the numbers what is going to happen next. And I think that's important. Now, how to do it is through an understanding of what I think is the response between the virus, how the virus is behaving now in certainly in vaccinated, highly vaccinated regions, the impact of the vaccination on immunity. And that's where I'll be talking about a few things with regards to IgG4 and as well taking into consideration some of the characteristics of different populations that would make people at risk. Now, I'll warn you that you usually have two camps, those who are very pro-vaccine, who think that everything will be perfect, and those who are anti-COVID vaccines in the sense that they think that there are major problems with it. I think that we're going to find that the analysis shows benefits and risks at both ends of the spectrum, both for the vaccinated cohort and the unvaccinated cohort, especially those who are at high risk for severe disease who, for whatever reason, didn't get vaccinated. So it's very important to have a balanced perspective on it. And I'll start off by quickly showing you where the data is coming from. And so this data was published just today, release date, the 21st of February, 2023. They are looking at a number of elements in the data set. The main one is deaths occurring between the 1st of April, 2021 and the 31st of December, 2022. Now, there was a little bit of pressure for this to happen, and I think uh, the MP, uh, Andrew Bridgend, was one of those who was pushing for this to occur. And I think it was very important what he did in that it allowed us to be able to objectively analyze the data. That's what is needed at this point. Where is the benefit? Where is the risk? This as well is what essentially it would look like. Uh, this, is, this is it here in the different sections. Um, I'm looking at the... Uh, the contents uh, right here, the definitions. So they define what is an unvaccinated person. Let me just make this good full screen. Uh, vaccinated with first dose less than 21 days, uh, first dose more than 21 days, second dose. And so they break it down quite nicely into all the different cohorts. They don't include the fourth booster, but they do include the third and the booster at least more than 21 days afterwards. And then they have it broken down even further in terms of age standardized mortality rates by vaccination status. And you can see it's going here from April 2021, all cause mortality. And they're looking at person years. And this is a statistical measure to give a bit more balance with regards to working out what happens. And then they work out the age standardized mortality per 100,000. So all of this information is here but it's a lot of data and it needs therefore to be analyzed. That's what I'll be trying to see if I can do. But what is different, and this is the reason I wanted you to register for Eventbrite, is I'll be coming from it from the angle of autoimmunity. So I'll be using what I think is my clinical understanding of what usually happens in the context of COVID-19 utilizing that on the background of my autoimmune research and at the same time trying to integrate those thoughts into saying, okay, based on what we're seeing here, this trajectory probably tells us that this is likely to happen next. So that's essentially what I'll be trying to do. And you just have to remember my perspective um, with regards to 
autoimmunity. And this here is the work that I've been doing since 2020. Viral mediated autoimmune diseases are not rare. There are lots of diseases that we have multiple sclerosis, myasthenia gravis, systemic lupus, rheumatoid arthritis, type 1 diabetes. These are all diseases that can be triggered by a virus. And this is essentially what I've been saying from the start. It's not that different with regards to COVID-19. And it is important to understand how the virus interacts with the immune system, which is what makes COVID-19 very unusual. Anybody who has been following my research, and the links are um, below for the papers, it's all about, from our perspective, ACE2. And I'll give you a quick schematic of what we have been saying. This is the autoimmunity process here. And what we had said is that ACE2 binds to the virus gets picked up by the immune system, and you get an autoimmune response leading to severe disease. And that was the explanation for severe COVID-19. Uh, when you come to the webinar, you will I'll give a bit more time and detail on those points, because I think they're very, very important. Once you understand this umbrella of autoimmunity, you can then start to interpret what we're seeing happening around us. And the reason this is important is because, as I said, with every medical intervention, there is benefit and risk. And this is something that we seem to have forgotten in the pandemic. And we have ended up with a very politicized situation where people are on different sides and we've lost the objectivity. It's important to recognize that vaccination has an impact on severe COVID-19. I think to discard that thought is not scientific. We can see the evidence of it in terms of the amounts of people who don't get severe COVID-19 in highly vaccinated regions. However, it doesn't mean that there are no risks. And that's the other part of the puzzle that needs to be worked out. We need to work out what are the longer term risks, especially in the context where the virus is still circulating. And that's where I really want to try and see if I can get involved in terms of trying to work out what is happening. Part of what I had been focused on even before was to do with the, um, the work around IgG4. I thought this was extremely important and I've done a presentation on Substack with regards to it. This was about the class switch towards non-inflammatory spike specific IgG4 uh, antibodies after SARS-CoV-2 vaccination. And this is crucial to be able to understand what's going on because you then have to understand how the virus then continues to circulate in a context where it's almost as if the immune system broadly is no longer fighting it. Then if it causes an autoimmune response, how does that present and how does it come across in different cohorts? It's very complicated when you just look at it, um, how it is. But from my point of view, once you understand autoimmunity, it gives you a different perspective. And that's what I'm trying to share. So if you do want to learn more about that, you can just click on the link. It's free. And even beyond the date, which will be next week, Thursday, it will give me some time to look at the data. There will still be a link for people who want to watch it after that point um, to see it. If you are on my Substack, um, I'm likely to do this presentation to some of the Substack subscribers before this event, that may be just a, a run in so that I can get my thoughts together. And so they'll have a, a little bit of an earlier discussion about what it is that I'm seeing. So I'd encourage you to join me on Substack as well. Um, and I'll make sure that the link is there too. So this is an important time. And I really appreciate the work that has been done by the Office of uh, National Statistics in the UK sharing this data, because that's what we need at this point from a scientific perspective. We just need data. We need to be able to study it and interpret it objectively. In the end, we are all trying to get the same outcome, which is safety and benefit for as much of the population as we can. Let's be prepared that the pandemic is not over and there are still some corners to na navigate. The better we understand it, the better prepared we will be. Have a great evening.